Welcome back to the Farmcast presented by 21st Century Equipment. I'm Mike Wemhoff, the Vice President of Precision Ag, and I got with me Hayden Fox, one of our product specialists, and Troy Randall, our, one of our uh, Precision Ag managers. So thanks for joining me again, guys. Here today as a little bit of a follow-up, we did a, a Farmcast with the S7-700. We're in front of our S7-800 for the model year 25 LPB machines that are running around our area, uh, going through some wheat harvest, really testing these things out. So, you know, wanted to really get out in front of our viewers here and let you know how these things are, are performing in the field, what we're seeing and uh, and how we're doing. So thanks again for joining me guys. Um, I guess maybe how many demos have we done and, and how have they been? Yes, yeah, so we've done four demos so far, um, three with our S7-700 and one with S7-800. We're getting ready to do a couple more demos so far so good. We've seen some pretty impressive things um, in terms of productivity with awesome. the demos we've done. So, yep. So our first one we started we started with the 700 down in some wheat with a showborn head, and that one went pretty good. Um, they were running a little bit bigger head, so it wasn't exactly apples to apples comparison. So, but we were able to kind of get the machine out there, get used to it, get it set right, and then let it kind of run off. We actually ran it off by itself, but the customer that ran it was really in impressed with it and the technology and everything and how much more productive they could see with the uh, predictors ground speed automation and things like that so once we got that working he could really sell we had that field we were doing there uh, down by Burlington was a really good test of it because it was a relatively flat field but it was pretty high yielding and it was real variable through the field so it went anywhere from about 40 to 80 bushels an acre throughout the field so we could really it was a really good test because the satellite imageries they take about you know six minutes to process the background once you start a field so before that we could kind of just run it in normal ground speed automation mode without the predictive uh predictive part of it so what that allows to do is kind of get the machine set actually see how the machine operated without that automation and then kind of operate in what i almost want to call is old school harvest smart mode mm -hmm. so the machine was more reactive versus proactive so it would only go on go off things like uh, rotor pressure loss things like that so it would have to kind of you know slow down as it went through the field and there's a few times we pretty much dove into a really good 80 spot where it power got pretty high and she got pretty pretty growly so and luckily kind of backed off uh, quick enough before it plugged or anything like that but the power went up uh, pretty high so it, it, it did a lot better job i've seen in the past of actually you know reactively sl sl speeding up slowing down uh, even without that predictive but once that so that satellite uh, satellite view map loaded. We actually got our predictive uh, ground speed automation working right. It was really cool to see the difference between not having that and having that because it did a lot better job going into those good spots, slowing down beforehand versus you know later on. And then once we were out of those good spots, it sped up a little bit quicker and then started just kind of using all the different metrics to better control the speed. So it was a really good test of you know having not having the predictive ground speed automation versus having it with the satellite views and kind of using the forward facing cameras plus that you know, uh, predictive yield map in the background to you know help automate the whole process. So it was a really cool, really cool test of the and then pretty much everything else, the harvest. Harvesting settings automation, that was uh, good to see and kind of get used to that and the differences in there too, so. Could you really see the engine RPMs kind of level out a little more with the predictive side? I do only see that, you don't really see the engine RPMs change, you just see more the power. So the power goes anywhere from, you know, pretty much 80 up to, you know, of course we can go up to like a, a with predictive ground speed automation, we can you know turn up max power up to 105 percent, and of course it goes a little bit above that too in the in the real high use cases. But mm -hmm. it, it it was just interesting to see how it was doing. It was pretty much trying to maintain. We had it set. I think that field we had it set to about 100, 101, just to kind of get used to it, and it did a pretty good job of trying to maintain it right around that 100, 100 percent utilization uh, throughout the entire field. So so the you talked a little bit about the setup side, and maybe we can focus on that here first. So hopefully we've gotten a little better at that as we've done more and more demos. Um, throughout different customers, but uh, what was that setup look like of the technology ahead of time and, and what things have we found that we need to do better uh, as we go through each one of these demos? Yeah, so I guess when we first took the combine to the field, we knew what we wanted it to do. It was just a matter of getting it to do what we wanted it to do. That was a little bit of a question mark. And so as we got some acres under it, uh, we started to realize that it was a lot easier to get it set and dialed in the way we would want it to clean and perform compared to an older combine. Um, the the harvest settings automation and and some of the things that are that are with a part of this combine just make the operator experience way easier, um, and it takes away the need for some of that higher level combine knowledge. It really offers an opportunity for a lower level operator or somebody not as familiar with the machine to get in there and still be able to perform and 
and make the combine function the way that it needs to. So after a couple acres, we felt pretty comfortable about what we needed to do. Uh, the other neat thing I think on that note was watching the the real time bar graphs that they have in there, the line graphs as we're going through the field. That gave us a really good insight as to what the combine's truly doing and helped us decide how we need to have it set. Mm -hmm. Histogram is what they like to call it. So <laughs> Histogram. <laughs> yeah, so so yeah, that's that's probably the coolest part about these machines is how they kind of redid the combine advisor part of it, you know, the setting is automation because it's a lot even to me. I was familiar with it in the old machines, but these new ones, it's like almost like a night and day difference. It just makes a lot more sense. Yep. And the old ones, it was kind of almost like you kind of had to know how to set that up and then had to set the machine up. And the biggest thing, the nice thing about these machines versus the older ones is we no longer had to set that performance target. So it pretty much, you just kind of set those different metrics. You kind of set your loss, your foreign material, your broken grain, and then you just go. The machine kind of learns, it kind of shows, you know, over a 15 minute time span, what's it, what it's doing, what it's seeing. And then it, you can kind of adjust from there. So you don't have to really set the machine. We always, of course, we always want to set the machine before we even get going, but then, we don't have to really set the machine, then set a performance target because sometimes a performance target took anywhere from, you know, five to ten to fifteen minutes to to read it and adjust and accept that, and then it kind of had to adjust from there. So it was kind of an unknown. It was it was just more it was just more of a challenging system to kind of set up. But this one is pretty much you just pretty much set it, you go, and then over time you kind of look at what it's seeing. It kind of looks at what it's seeing, and you can really fine tune you know what you want it to adjust versus off what it's seeing, what you're seeing, things like that. It's more much more user friendly, user intuitive system. So, yeah. so from a customer standpoint, if they purchase one of these in 2025, they got the 25 uh, machine next year. They're going from field to field. Really, going from field to field, you don't need to adjust a lot. If I'm hearing that right, and 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 you're just kind of monitoring what's happening yep. Uh, yep. as you're changing fields. Yep, yep. It just makes it easier to monitor all that. So the nice thing with these machines too that we've found is there's some growers that have expressed concern about being able to adjust certain settings on this machine more effectively than the machine does. And with our automated harvest settings, we can go in there and choose what settings we want the machine to adjust which was a nice feature for some of the operators. I think we'd kind of played with some of those settings and let them got comfortable with the machine so that we could show that they can trust what the machine is doing rather than them just sit there and adjust everything on the fly. So. Yep, and then the whole interface, it's a lot more, like I said, it's just a lot nicer to look at because it actually tells you what it's, a cha what it's changing, why, or if it's adjusting like your rotor speed, um, your clearance, the sieve, the chaffer, the fan speed is actually telling you in real time it highlights blue and it pretty much says, you know, hey, I'm changing this feature because I'm seeing this, I'm seeing broken grain, I'm seeing too much loss on on your automation side of things. So sure. it, it gives you a lot better indication of you know why it's changing, mm -hmm. why it's changing, what it's changing, and then how by how much too. So and then yeah. you kind of get that real time graph too, so you actually see if it makes a difference or not. And of course you can adjust the sensitivity of you know how aggressively it changes it up or down. So if it's kind of very quick and aggressive or kind of slow and methodical, so mm -hmm. things like that. Yeah. So and you can even lock out like it's like one thing since we run a shell burn on this last week, one thing we did have to lock out was the rotor clearance because that's usually run that anywhere from zero to two or three to four on when you're on a shell borne because we're not we're not putting all that material through the machine so we can run a lot uh, tighter clearance so we didn't really want it to be adjust on that as we go along because that's one thing you kind of want to just keep keep closed down we didn't mm -hmm. want it so it was kind of interesting to see when we had that sit and walked out but how it would change fan speed how it would change rotor speed how it would change our seven or chaffer going through the field to kind of adjust you know when it was seeing more trashy conditions less trashy conditions broken grain um, not not as much broken grain, things like mm -hmm. that. So yeah, maybe you could also dive into some of the data that we've been looking at post harvest. So after utilizing the machines, you know, doing some data analysis in the John Deere Operations Center, looking at how these machines performed. Um, what what did we see there? Yeah, it was fairly impressive. We hear all the time that guys wish we could sell an operator with a combine. And after <laughs> after running these combines in the field for a little bit, I really believe that you could throw about anybody in one of these and still do a a good job and still stay productive. We were um, we were outperforming about every machine that we ran next to, even in the cases of the combines that were running a bigger head than us. We were uh, we were running more bushel an hour through our machines in most cases than they yep. even were, um, and doing as good, if not a better, job in terms of losses and, and cleanliness mm -hmm. and things like that. So it was pretty impressive to see that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Number wise, I think. If you want to talk about that. Okay. <laughs> you got the numbers. Yeah, so so yeah, the last demo we did oh, last week, we pretty much ran it with a number of other machines too. So this was number five, or the fifth machine we had out there. So we had pretty much three three other 
70 series and there's an 80 series out there too, but luckily we're all running the same size, you know, 32 foot Shelburne head. So it was a really good apples to apples comparison, uh, our 700 versus at least other three, other three 70 series machines too. But the nice thing when we got going governing set up, you know, I was riding with the, riding with the grower there and we pretty much were getting used to the machine. And the fun part was, is we got going in the back of the pack and then pretty soon we were telling everyone to get out of the way because we were <laughs> passing them because, because <laughs> we pretty much had the machine set where it could tell us we could go faster and it was doing just a good job going faster. So, so with, at that rate, they were kind of averaging probably throughout their, through that field, I think they were averaging about 900 bushel much an hour through the machine and then we were pretty much up to i think the whole the field field average was about a thousand bushel an hour maybe a little bit more a thousand fifty bushel an hour was the average for the whole field so i think in real time we were anywhere from depending depending where we're running at the real time was you know 1100 to 1300 bushel an hour on our machine on that real time mystogram and then i think the other machines they were anywhere from that 800 you know 750 to 900 depending how fast they were going to sure. so but they were we could definitely speed up a lot based off what the machine was telling us so we could you know maximize the, the size and efficiency of that machine a lot better and that was a really good field to where we we're at it was in some really hilly ground, so it was cool because everything was kind of working. The terrain settings automation was working, so as we went up, went up and down hills, it was adjusting our fan speed and our you know, uh, seven chaffer based off if we're going up or downhill, and that's something they've used, Pat, and that customer uses quite a bit too. They love it for that for that reason. So, but that's all in the machine too. So it was using that like it should be too, and then. It was nice because of that. That those fields are real variable too, yield wise, as it irrigated wheat. So it was anywhere from, you know, I think kind of 60, 70 up to 100 plus. Mm -hmm. So it was really nice to be able to, you know, see how that machine sped up, slow down in those different areas. You know, when it would go down in the good ground, it would kind of slow down. When it speed back, it would speed back up in that wider area too. So it was really maximizing, I guess, the the throughput of that machine, which is kind of our goal, because that's why I tell guys when we hit, when you see that histogram bar graph, we see our throughput at the top there. And that's what we want to try to maintain that consistent throughout the machine. That means we're always feeding, you know, the same amount of material through that machine, uh, independent of our, you know, speed and yield. So, you know, if we're in low, 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 low yielding spots, we can speed up, get that throughput up. If we're in high yielding spots, we can slow down and still maintain that same throughput throughout the day. Um, yeah. And that's that's kind of what, that's kind of the selling feature of it too, is you know, maintaining the peak efficiency of the machine and the throughput of it, so. So roundabout, I think we saw about 100 bushels an acre more throughput on these machines comparative to those other machines in the same field, and then uh, about two more acres an hour um, f from this machine over those other machines in the field. So very, you know, kind of, I'd say matches and maybe even a little better than the 19% productivity uh, savings that uh, John Deere is, is advertising with these machines. So uh, really happy to see that that is panning out and, and that we're be able to do those comparisons and, and see that value yeah. for our customers. Wheat's probably a little bit different condition, so it'll be really cool to see when we get it into corn and see mm -hmm. how that, because we have, we definitely, we definitely send a lot, lot more material through the machine when it comes to corn. So it's mm -hmm. gonna be fun to see, you know, what that looks like when it comes to corn and yep. the differences there, because I think that's where it's really gonna shine. So yeah. that's what's our, what our hope is this fall is to get it out a lot, a lot to different places and we yep. put it through spaces and test it the best we can, so. Yep. Wheat's always challenging with the rain. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, <laughs> trying to coordinate all that. And when yeah. it's wheat harvest time, it's wheat harvest time. So Pretty short window. It's a very yeah, short Yeah, we have window. about a two week window versus like a two month window. So <laughs> yeah. definitely, we, yeah. we, we learned that definitely <laughs> the hard way the past couple of weeks is getting logistics and getting machine here and there in a timely fashion because we'd get it moved over here at rain. So we had to wait or then we had to move it up here they weren't ready, so I'd move it back over here. Back, yeah, it was, mm -hmm. it was, it's been fun. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> the machine's got some miles on it uh, and, uh, on the back of a truck. Yeah, so, so. Yeah. yeah. And I know uh, for any customers watching that uh, wanted to run this and maybe couldn't logistically or whatever, um, you know, happy to to help you in the fall if we can. So um, definitely, let us know what we what we can do to get this combine demo out to you. So, yeah, hopefully we have a little more. A little more lax, slow down time during corn harvest because it's a little more yeah. spread out. So right. we'll be. <laughs> right. Thank you guys very much, and we'll see you next time on the Farmcast.